Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. With the ANC's policy conference beginning late next week, Deputy President Cyril Ramaphosa has moved to reclaim the term radical economic transformation from those he says are misusing it. Terence Screamer joins me to talk about the contestation over the meaning of the phrase. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. There is much societal skepticism and unease with the term radical economic transformation. Why? Well, I think it's been very much aligned with this view uh, that the state has been captured. And I think there has, as uh, the Deputy President mentioned, there was a, a concerted publicity offensive where that term was used along with the term white monopoly capital to deride those that they felt were standing in the way of a certain family, we know through the Gupta uh, email leaks, uh, as well as this agenda for um, uh, a, a, a more accelerated transformation in a sense, but it wasn't really. It was really about a predatory elite taking control um, of of economic policy and fashioning it in their own image and likeness. And I think there's a lot of societal skepticism. I think the Gupta leaks email confirmed the narrative that was already in society that uh, that the, the Gupta family had major influence over certain ministers and over the president. But I think <laughs> it showed just as how pervasive um, uh, this state capture is, um, especially where it's related to the, um, the uh, state-owned companies such as Eskom and Transnet and uh, also the, the, the Prasa cases that have come up. So it's, it's, um, it's led to a lot of skepticism in society, a lot of pushback, I think, from society who feel that this is just a, 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 a money-grubbing uh, type exercise that it's about uh, taking what should be good and wholesome policy, for instance, the localization programs around uh, the Eskom and Transnet rollouts, the industrialization programs around that, and recasting those and re-molding uh, those to suit the interests of a small elite. How is the Deputy President, who is also a contender to take over leadership of the ANC, seeking to redefine the phrase? Well, he's really seeking to reclaim this phrase, and he's saying that the genesis of this phrase is not this uh, publicity offensive, not this paid-for, uh, Bal Pottinger-supported uh, publicity campaign, but really it came out of um, a recognition that we entered by the ANC, that we entered a, a second phase of the transition as adopted uh, in Mangaum as a policy of the ANC that's going to really focus on, on economic transformation. So the first phase was very much about political liberation, a human rights, establishing a human rights culture in South Africa from the transition from apartheid. And that is very much, I think, the ANC felt was entrenched. Um, uh, the, the next phase was really about going, uh, accelerating the transformation uh, economically so that uh, broadening the political freedom to a more economic freedom for, uh, for the majority of South Africans. And he says that the phrase really came out, uh, well, to it, it has its genesis in the Freedom Charter of 1955, and it came out of the National Development Plan in many ways, the, the plan that he oversaw the drafting of, in the sense is when the National Development Plan was adopted as the policy that, uh, for economic transforming, uh, or the second phase of the transition or the economic transformation. There was the, uh, the, um, the strategic framework, which gave sort of put meat to the National Development uh, Plan's uh, bones in, in terms of government uh, programs. And that, uh, that strategic framework is where the term radical economic transformation was first used and that uh, it actually was about putting emphasis on those, e on those elements uh, that, um, that were already in ANC policy. So he's saying it's no, it does not represent a break with ANC policy or government policy, but rather putting emphasis on an acceleration of certain aspects, especially the, the, the transformation around ownership and control of the economy, but also the, the structure of the economy, making it a, 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 an economy that's far less oligopolistic or where monopoly businesses or monopoly pricing is prevalent. And we see that time and time again coming out of the Competition Commission investigations where we have this structural constraint, which is an impediment to transformation in many ways because it, 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 it prevents new entrants. So really it was about accelerating uh, existing policy. It was not supposed to be a break with policy. It wasn't supposed to be taking us along a whole new path 
as suggested by the, 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 the paid for um, campaign around white monopoly capital and radical economic transformation, which includes quite um, illegal and unconstitutional remedies to transformation around land reform without compensation, which is going to require a change to the constitution uh, around the, the mandate of the Reserve Bank, as we see that's very topical at the moment with the Public Protectors Report, which again, um, it's constitutionally defined, it would require a change to the constitution and other uh, elements that are, that are coming up. And I suppose the, the one most recent is uh, how they're trying to, how there's an attempt to try and use the, the policy around mining, the mining charter to, uh, to change, to transform but again, it has a number of illegal and unconstitutional elements to it, it seems. Robert Pauza gave a practical example of how inclusive growth and transformation should be merged into, this, into the dispute over the mining charter. Yes, exactly that. He, he said it needs to be, if we're going to pursue economic transformation, and he said people shouldn't be afraid of the word radical because we have to deal with some fundamental issues in this economy around past dispossession which has led to our, our triple challenge of poverty, inequality and unemployment. If we're going to address those, we, uh, you know, adding the word radical is not such a, uh, a big problem because we need to make some fundamental changes and business shouldn't be scared of that term. In fact, he, he encouraged people to get behind it. But he, he did say, say that in order to move ahead feasibly, you need to have a consulted um, negotiated process, much like we did with our democratic transition. There was a democratic, uh, there was a, a deep and long uh, um, uh, consultation process to get us to a point where we were able to uh, develop a new democratic dispensation, a new constitution. Here, if we're going to move together um, to tackle economic transformation and the elements of tra uh, uh, both inclusive growth, uh, which uh, which is a term that the world is adopting now because there has been this widening gap or this inequality gap around the world towards so this this need to have a more inclusive growth path as well as to transform the, the racial structures of, of South African society you know if we're going to do that we need to do it together and therefore we need to have deep consultation you need to have a meeting of minds Either you must be equally unhappy or equally happy with the outcomes. And that is not what happened in the case of the mining charter. There was a lack of consultation. It's very well documented that the mining industry has not really been deeply consulted around those, the very fundamental changes that are in that document. And uh, Sir Ramaphosa was saying there's this misalignment. And clearly the only way to deal with this misalignment is for the parties to get back to the get together and go back to the drawing board, as he suggested, and have this proper, full and complete consultation process. So it was a very practical example. If we're going to go on this radical economic transformation path, it's not about, it is about government leading and giving the policy direction, but it's not leading by itself. You know, um, I'm the leader, where, where, where are the followers? You know, it's about uh, consulting uh, that transition, having a give and take, realizing there will be compromise from each side, but having a bit of a social compact, much like we did around the democratic transition, and getting behind that. So that's the sort of practical recasting through the mining charter. What should we be looking out for uh, over the next week and a bit with regard to the evolution of the term? I think the, the, the policy conference of the ANC is going to be closely watched by everyone and to see which of these, which side on the factions around the, the, those that are trying to control the term radical economic transfer prevail. So if you look at the, uh, up, the, 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 policy, the policy conference is taking place in uh, Nasrex uh, next to Soccer City from the 30th of June to the 5th of July. There's a couple of days uh, ahead of it where there's going to be some soul searching around uh, the ANC around this whole issue of self-correction and whether the, how the SA, ANC can deal with this whole uh, self-correction. But really it's about coming up with uh, policies for the next, uh, if ANC is going to be the governing party, for the next uh, term of the, the ANC. And also we know we're going into an, uh, uh, a national conference at the end of the year on December 16th, also in Gauteng, where new leaders will be elected in the ANC. So th these are going to be very important signposts. I think a lot of attention is going to be paid to the economic policy outcomes. There are obviously many policy documents 
the current policy document, uh, the economic policy document of the ANC is, is benign, uh, is market friendly. It does have these emphasis on transformation, but it's done again in that compact, compactual uh, consensus building way, not in this going alone way. If there's a major rewrite of that um, uh, in terms of the way that the, the paid for aff publicity offensive has tried to recast uh, radical economic transformation, it's going to be a very negative signal for the markets and uh, as well as for the, the f also probably a signal for what's going to happen in December in terms of uh, will ANC self-correct. If, if uh, the, the policy is held very much more or less intact or maybe slightly tweaked or strengthened um, really with an emphasis on exclusive growth I think that's going to be a signal uh, a positive signal for the market so I think it's a it's a big um, event it's I think the most um, important policy conference that the ANC has ever had in its history in terms of where we're at at the moment and I think it's going to be very very closely watched not only by the media but by domestic uh, business foreign investors, both ones that are here and ones that are potentially going to be coming into South Africa um, for a signal as to where the ANC is going and where the ANC is likely to be leading to um, in terms of that elective conference at the end of the year. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.